Hello and welcome to Detroit Reforms. I'm your host, DJ Oliver, and today I'm at Next Step Studio. This is the studio and gallery of our first featured artist, Kaiser Sudan, who uses some familiar shapes to create powerful art. Check it out. I think it creates peace when you have order. When everything's in order, life becomes easier, I guess, and less chaos. I started playing around with clay in eighth grade and just fell in love with it. I was always into gardening as a kid too, so playing in the dirt and clay coming from the ground um, and clay being so tactile, you know, touching it and being able to do whatever you want with it. I guess I was fortunate enough to be able to take my creativity into the business end of things. I'm taking clay in a different direction. I did the traditional thing of pots and cups and saucers and stuff like that, and I just got bored with it very quickly. And then I moved on into doing installation work when I was in school, and that whole idea took off, and I started playing with different forms. First, it was actually these funky teapots I made, and then that went into this conical phase with cones, and then now it's this the jacks. I just like the shape, I mean, it's an iconic form, so I took it and started playing around with it, and the, the whole idea took off like, like crazy. I started with the gunmetal finish to mimic the metal jack, and then I started playing around with the color, and then now I'm doing the decal work. I have two assistants, and uh, they, do, they do most of the casting. The one assistant, Peter from Cranbrook, does some of the glazing also. And we, you know, we usually have, we have a whole sound system throughout the whole place, and it keeps a rhythm going and everybody gets along with everybody most days. And <laughs> the process in making the work is um, plaster molds. It's a, they're a two-part mold and the process is called slip casting. So you, you know, put the clay in to the mold, you let it set up and then you pour it out. I have 30 molds on the small ones and I think 25 on the big ones. So we can fill them all up in one day, but then they sit in overnight and then the next day we take them apart, so it's, it's a, it's a two-day, sometimes three-day process. Once they're out of the mold, they have to dry, and then we have to sand the, the, the line around where the two-part mold comes in. When they're in the greenware stage, I, I'll carve into some of them. You'll see some of the jacks have carvings in, which is a lot of fun, too. It's quite a process, and you got to open up the mold, clean them up, put them in the kill, take them out. Then they go into the glaze section where we'll start glazing them and I'll draw on some of them also. And then if I decide to do the decals on them, that's the third step. We've got the numbers, uh, the dots, whatever design I want. I mean, <clears throat> this is a really cool design that we put on them. And the beauty about the decal work is that if I don't like the way something comes out or if I'm not happy with it, they, I can put another layer of decal on it and, 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 and work over it. And then here's another design too. So on this, I'll put this on a cube. And again, I'm always working on five, six, sometimes 10 pieces at the same time because I'm layering the, the decals. I have a whole library of decals that I print out. And I mean, even the decal company kind of questioned, what are you gonna do with this? And I'm like, well, you know, just play around with them, so. And it's a lot of fun. So, I mean, again, taking clay out of the realm or out of the box, so to speak. You know, some designs are more successful than others. Sometimes I'm my own worst judge, but, um, you know, if I don't like it, somebody will like it kind of thing. Um, I don't think there's any right or wrong. I get into a rhythm when I'm working and whatever comes to mind. Sometimes I'll make notes when I'm on the road or whatever, sort of like what a rap artist might do and then try to put stuff together. And I mean, you could actually tell a story. If I run into a, a psychiatrist or a shrink, or whatever, and, or, or just, or anybody that says, well, what's this all? I go, you know, I'll just say jokingly, that's for a shrink to figure out, you know, why you do what you do as an artist or a painter or what have you, when you think about it. You know, it's all done very subconsciously. I don't, sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing until it's done. I'm fascinated by letters and numbers, which you'll see in a lot of the work. If you see the, some of the words in, on the cubes and the jacks, and especially the cubes, is it's just a play on opposite words. It was just, I thought it was kind of a fun idea. And people are fascinated by it because they'll stop and, and they'll start reading some of the stuff. People will interact with the work and whatever speaks to them in a sense. It's priceless when you think, when somebody comes up to me and says that 
you know, a piece that they bought five, ten years ago, whatever, still brings a smile to their face. It makes me feel good. It's about getting that reaction and creating a reaction, especially with the words and on the cubes, provoking perhaps an emotion. And that's how you should react to art, and that's how you should buy art. Not necessarily with your wallet, but with your heart. Things that are connected into the gallery are my workspace, my home. Over the last 10 years, it's become a compound of sorts, and a maze. The other work that you see in the gallery brings joy and a smile to my face when I see it. Like the crows, I think those are very funny. They all have their own little individual personality to them. I represent Grace Ann Warren, who's a very, very talented painter, wax and caustic pieces. Mark Chatterley, who does the big ceramic sculptures uh, from Williamston. There's a, a talented artist from Atlanta by the name of Joan Rasmussen that I show here quite a bit. Instead of having the gallery under my name, I decided to use Next Step because everybody has their next step and what they're doing in life. I mean, you'll hear that all the time. What is your next step? What are you doing? So I kind of grabbed onto that and I like to take people who I think are talented and need a bigger audience and help promote their careers. To give back, to, to be able to be fortunate to where I got, to where I'm at, and to be able to help undergraduate students or graduate students and help them develop their careers. You can learn more about Kaiser Sudan as well as all the artists we feature on DetroitPerforms.org.